Hello and welcome back to this GCSE Chemistry Revision Series brought to you by RevisedChemistry.uk. Today we're going to be learning about ionic bonding, simple covalent structures, giant covalent structures and metallic bonding. When a covalent bond is formed, atoms share electrons and these are shared between two different non-metals. We normally say that a shared pair of electrons has been formed because both atoms normally share one electron each to form that covalent bond. Simple molecules are only made up of a few atoms and are typically around 0.1 nanometers in size. Just like for ionic bonding, we can draw dot and cross diagrams to show what's happening with the electrons in covalent structures. The simplest covalent structure we can draw is between two hydrogen atoms to form diatomic hydrogen. We know that hydrogen has only got one electron in its outermost shell, and for hydrogen, it needs to have a full shell of two electrons to be stable. We can draw a diagram to show that if both hydrogen atoms share one electron in a covalent bond, we will end up with two electrons able to orbit around both hydrogen atoms. A similar example between hydrogen and chlorine, we can draw a dot and cross diagram to show how these two will form a covalent bond. Hydrogen has one electron in its outer shell and chlorine has seven. Both of them want a full outer shell of electrons. For hydrogen, that means two electrons. and For chlorine, that means eight. Both of our atoms can share one electron each into a covalent bond and what we end up with is hydrogen having two electrons to orbit around its atom and chlorine now has eight. We can make things a little bit more complicated by having a go at drawing the dot and cross diagram for water. We've now got two hydrogen atoms and one oxygen atom. We know that hydrogen has only got one electron in its outer shell. At this point in time, it may be worth to note because hydrogen only has one electron in its outer shell, it can only form one covalent bond. Therefore, we're going to need to bond it to something that can form more than one covalent bond. Oxygen has only got six electrons in its outer shell. That means it needs to gain two more to become stable. It can gain those two electrons by forming one bond with each of the different hydrogen atoms. If we draw this as a dot and cross diagram, we can now see that all of the atoms involved have full outer shells of electrons. Each hydrogen with two and oxygen now with eight. Why not have a go at drawing the covalent dot and cross diagrams for methane, oxygen and carbon dioxide? Have a look at the formulas to determine how many covalent bonds you will need between each of the atoms involved. Pause the video now to wait for the answer. Unlike ionic compounds, simple molecular structures have very low melting and boiling points, and that's due to them having very weak intermolecular forces of attraction. And because of this, most simple molecular structures are actually found in either the liquid or the gas state at room temperature. Simple molecular structures are also very poor conductors of electricity, as they have no free moving electrons or ions. Diamond and graphite are different forms of carbon. Carbon has lots of different forms, and we call these forms allotropes. We can call all of these different forms giant covalent structures, as they're made up of lots and lots of carbon atoms covalently bonded together. In diamond, each carbon atom is covalently bonded to four other carbon atoms in a repeating lattice structure. And in diamond, there are no free-moving electrons. This rigid structure of carbon atoms, held together by very strong covalent bonds, makes diamond a very hard material. It means that it has a very high melting and boiling point because the amount of energy required to break the covalent bonds is going to be very high. Because of these properties, diamond is often used in cutting tools. In graphite, each carbon atom is bonded to only three other carbon atoms. This gives rise to a layered structure of graphite made up of hexagonal rings. Because each carbon atom only forms three bonds, each carbon atom therefore has one electron free. And this electron is donated to the structure and is called a free moving electron. Because of this, graphite is able to conduct electricity. Because graphite is made up of layers, it also works as a very good lubricant because each of the layers are able to slide over each other. There are three other types of carbon structure that you need to be aware of. Graphene, 
which is a single layer of graphite and has the same properties as graphite does too. Nanotubes, which are a single layer of graphite or graphene, which has been wrapped around to make a tube. Nanotubes have a very high tensile strength, which means they are very strong in tension and resist being stretched. Fullerenes are small spheres of carbon atoms held together by strong covalent bonds. Technically, because they contain so few carbon atoms, they're not actually classed as giant covalent structures. However, they still have very similar properties to graphene as they are also able to conduct electricity. The last type of giant covalent structure that you need to be aware of is polymers. Polymers are made up of long chains of atoms, normally with a carbon backbone. We'll learn more about polymers in later videos.